guys, Pandering Panda here with another video. Today is a special one because I read the comments. I'm part of the Pig K community. Sometimes you guys get scared of card magic or dare I say, even bored and you want something else. Well, today I have something special. I thought I would show you guys what tricks you could do if you are in a hotel room. That's right, I'm just gonna use tricks with stuff you could find lying around any clean and sanitary hotel room. Hotel rooms are like a magic store, if you know where to look. And luckily for you guys, you're gonna have the old Pigga here as your guide. Oh boy. Um, by the way, this episode is sponsored by the Pig Cake Magic Academy. Over 80 videos covering theory, tricks, moves, and slights. And now the Academy has expanded to coin work. So all you dapper, Want to be coin magicians could just learn some coin magic for the cost of a cheap wrench once a month. And if you want some of that next level stuff, check out the Mentalism Academy. Man, it's like the same thing, but with mentalism. That one is a little bit more expensive. It's the price of a nicer wrench. It's still cheap, but you should totally check it out if you want to get your uh, mentalism on. See, the key to coming up with magic with stuff from a hotel room is that you have to open your mind. You have to experiment like you did in college with your sexuality. So you can't see things as they are. For example, this cup, this could be used as a, uh, as a vessel for a very popular trick. So this trick is going to be a little bit of a guessing game, sir. Are you a fan of guessing games? Well, you have to figure out if this sugar packet is going to be inside of this ordinary empty cup or is it going to be inside of my pocket. That's going to be the decision that you're going to have to make, sir. So look, I'm going to very openly place it inside of my pocket. Where is it? In my pocket or underneath the cup? In my pocket? Well, guess what? You're wrong, you anemic accident. This is why your parents disowned you when you were a child. Um, so I'll give you another shot here. Is this sugar packet inside of my pocket or underneath the cup? Of course, it's underneath the cup. That's where I was... Um, I'm going to give you one last opportunity, sir, because at this point, this is pathetic. So, uh, is it inside of my pants or is it underneath the cup? Underneath the cup? No, that's, uh, seems like you've creamed your pants, sir, because that's the, ch that's the creamer. You've creamed your, um, so this is actually a very easy trick to do. All you need is, uh, two sugar packets and, uh, creamer. This is stuff that you could very easily find in a hotel room, assuming that it's in uh, North America. If you're in a different part of the world, your hotel room might just be, um, I don't even know if they have hotels in other parts of the world. So anyways, you're gonna have to have one of these inside of your palm, just like this, hidden away. And this is gonna go inside of your pocket. So then this starts inside of your cup and you're ready to go for this amazing guessing game. You're going to take the sugar packet out of the cup and tell the spectator that this is going to be a little bit of a guessing game. They have to figure out if the sugar packet is going to be underneath the cup or inside of your pocket. So here you're going to show the cup empty. You're going to grab it with your right hand. And this is going to give you a nice opportunity to just put it in this classic cups and balls position. So in a moment, you're going to pick this one up and draw attention to the sugar packet as you take the cup and drop it on the table. However, as I drop it on the table, I'm just letting the sugar packet fall underneath the cup. So now I'm already ready. You're gonna take this and supposedly put it inside of your pocket. However, you're just gonna keep it in your hand in what magicians refer to as a palm. So you're gonna place it in your pocket and have the spectator guess. Whatever answer they may come up with, their lack of intelligence, you're gonna show that there's a sugar packet underneath the cup. This is gonna be your misdirection to bring your hand back out and guess what, be ready to be in the same position as before. See, I'm ready to load the cup again. So I'm going to show the packet, place it inside of my pocket. But this time, instead of just palming it, I'm actually going to grab out the creamer. And I have the spectator guess one last time whether the sugar packet is in my pocket or underneath the cup. Whatever it is they may say, again, you lift it up and you congratulate them if they say underneath the cup. And that's going to be sufficient misdirection to bring this and hold it in the same exact position as before. If the spectator gets it wrong, you could refer to them as an accident or do whatever it is that their parents did to them. And now the last one is gonna be in the other pocket. So you're gonna load 
this the same way as before and tell the spectator you're gonna give them one last opportunity. Is it in your pants or uh, underneath the cup? Whatever they answer, you go, actually, it's in my pants because I creamed my pants because this is creamer. And that's a nice little bit of an ending to this uh, wonderful uh, piece of prestidigitation. That trick was good, right? You liked it, I liked it. It's definitely one of the ones that you could show if you ever bring a female up to your room and you wanna entice her with your magic. Uh, well, eventually, when that doesn't happen, what are you gonna use? Toilet paper, am I right? Because you're gonna have to... Well, anyways, this is a little piece of magic you could do with a toilet paper. A uh, square, a small square. You're gonna tear this up into many pieces, much like um, your love life. And you could weave a story about how when you were younger, your uncle took you into the game closet and uh, made you realize what a man was. Well, eventually, you're gonna need a little bit of a fire to do this because the fire helps with the magic. See, what that does is that that fuses all the little bits together. And believe it or not, where that paper was once torn, it's now restored. Man, if that's not a trick, I don't know what is. So this is gonna be a very easy trick to do. All you need is a lighter, which goes in your right pocket, as well as some sheets of toilet paper. If you're staying at one of those good hotels, they're gonna really splurge on a two-ply. If you're gonna stay at one of the hotels that I typically go to, they're gonna have one ply and you're gonna rip a hole right through it and you're gonna um, question yourself. So this one, uh, you might wanna use some two ply. However, it still works in a pinch with single ply. And the preparation for this is you're just gonna grab one of these and ball it up. This is gonna go on your left hand in what magicians refer to as finger palm position. So now you could bring up your toilet paper and say, look, here's a piece of toilet paper. And I want you to notice something that's happening with my hands right now. They're mirroring each other. You see this? Uh, I, I don't have it right now, so this hand is like this and this hand is like this. That would look dumb because then they would say, hey, sir, there's clearly something in your other hand. Why don't you show me what's there? And then you have to show them and they're gonna laugh at you. <laughs> so what you do is that you take your fapkin and you're gonna start cutting it up into small pieces, just like this. Again, keeping note that the hands are mirroring each other. Now, once you are done tearing up the fabkin in as many pieces as you possibly can, you're gonna show it in your right hand. And here you're gonna do a little bit of a transfer move, a little bit of a transfer. You see how it's, it seems like there's one, but there's really two. What's gonna happen is that you're gonna just ball it up as best you can. And you're gonna ask the spectator if they have a lighter. Now what's gonna happen here is a very simple move. You're just going to put your thumb on top of the little napkin here as you pretend to put it in the other hand. So you wanna time this so it doesn't look like this. <laughs> and you wanna put your thumb as your hand is turning over and giving a better illusion. You wanna make sure that there's a little bit of contact and a putting action because that's what's gonna justify you going to your pocket and looking for a lighter, which is exactly where you had it. And now, guess what? Because you've ditched that little piece of paper or the little bits in your pocket when you take out the lighter, you could just wave the lighter underneath like it's some sort of magic ethereal wand and show that the pieces have come back together. That's a nice little piece of magic. Oh boy, man. And then if you want, you could even have them keep the tissue paper as a little souvenir of this momentous occasion. Here's another easy one because every hotel room I've ever been to has a little pad and a pen where you could keep notes. These are great for prediction tricks. And uh, in this case, you could turn to a participant after writing a prediction. In this case, here's my prediction right here. You make sure you look at the spectator, go back to your pad, and now you hand them the pen. You tell the spectator, sir, I'm holding a little bit of a pad here. I don't want you to think that I'm gonna switch it out, but I want you to think of any card in the deck. You got one? Now I committed myself to writing. For the first time, name the card out loud. The Eight of Spades. Or you could have named any card you wanted, sir. 
any card at all. I didn't influence you. I didn't influence you whatsoever. But as you could see, I wrote, you're in a hotel room. What are you doing? Go outside. There's a bar. There are females at the bar. You're here in a hotel room thinking about magic. Why? What are you doing to yourself? Gosh. Ah. <sighs>